we gave Elizabeth the middle name of Joy and she was our, our Joy. Um, so when she passed away so abruptly, so tragically, our Joy left us. She was a beautiful character, loving, very thoughtful. From the moment you wake up uh, to going to bed at night, you're literally, Liz is always there. Mm. And she's always on your mind. A bright, bubbly, funny teenager who loved music and sport, Lizzie Lowe was a committed Christian. She also believed she was gay. Lizzie couldn't see how to be both. She was worried about telling her parents and feared her church wouldn't accept her sexuality. On the 10th of September 2014, Lizzie took her own life in fields behind her local park. I can't imagine the pain and anguish that Lizzie was going through. Um, I don't think we can at all. Uh, and it pains us to know that she was going through that alone. We just wanted her, just like all our children, to be happy. Absolutely not would it have made any difference at all. And that's, that's the sad part, the really sad part. Lizzie's death devastated the community in Didsbury, her family, her friends, her school and her church and it completely changed the way that church responds to the issue of sexuality. In the last four years, St James and its sister church, Emmanuel, have formally adopted the title of Inclusive Church. We believe in church which, in the power of the Holy Spirit, allows all people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Jesus Christ. And it means everyone is welcomed, regardless of race, wealth, gender or sexuality. <laughs> Both congregations have become more diverse. Songs are often signed. Special prayers are offered for same-sex couples who've married. And from youth leadership to music, anyone can take part in any aspect of worship. So it's nice to be able to bring up our girls in the same way that we grew up, which is coming to church on a Sunday. We don't see ourselves as any different, so it's quite it's refreshing to us that the church feels the same way. Coming out was always very difficult for me. I, I, there have been moments when I felt like I've got nobody to talk to who would understand my point of view, but it's nice to know that I am accepted for who I am. I was surprised by Nick just because one of the first things he said to me was that it, there's nothing wrong with being gay at all. And I've never heard, especially from a Christian, someone be so sure about that. Nick was Lizzie's vicar and has spearheaded becoming inclusive, but he admits that before her death he chose not to talk about sexuality in church. I th felt wrongly, as it turned out, that it was better not to stir up a hornet's nest around sexuality. If we don't talk about it, then people can have either their more progressive, their more liberal views or their more conservative and traditional views. And how do you feel about that? I wish we could turn the clock back. I wish we could have done something ahead of that decision that Lizzie took that would have given her just the slightest chance to have opened up, found a safe place to talk. We had to change. We had to make sure something like this would never happen again. But becoming fully inclusive hasn't been easy. We spoke to parishioners opposed to the church's new position on sexuality, but they were reluctant to talk on camera for fear of people's reactions. For others, inclusion has taken time to accept. I did struggle initially, yes, because there do seem to be passages in the Bible that just blanket call it wrong. And to change all that is, it has not been easy. I can do it now. I, I think the the people I talk to are just lovely people and they love the Lord. I'm on my own journey because I absolutely understand how you can interpret the, the biblical passages differently and I think logically now I'm there at inclusion and yet I mean I'm of a generation who grew up when homosexuality is only just legalized. It, it's a huge cultural shift. People left the church because of it. People are still unhappy. 
Around 25 members of the congregation have now left because they don't agree with the church's new direction. Last week I had an email from a young man who's basically said he can no longer journey with us because homosexual behaviour is sinful. What would you say to those people who say that you're abandoning 2,000 years of traditional teaching? I used to be somebody that would hold a traditional view. And so in one sense I can understand. But we lost a teenager at 14 to suicide. And that puts everything else into perspective. But losing people is really tragic. We've had another exodus since we've announced that we've been involved in Didsbury Pride. This is St James and Emmanuel's first Pride event. It's unusual for a church to organise and stage one of these events. It's a big statement. We have gone through a revolution of inclusion in our church and today is the culmination for us of that journey. But holding this event has been hugely controversial. Really, really sad to find um, that I'd had a couple of text messages early hours of this morning that I'm going to hell uh, for my the beliefs that I have and for, for welcoming people of um, um, you know the gay community. I've had some awful emails, I've had social media, I, you know, it's been hard and I've worried, I've really worried that I've pushed the church too far. And I have been a bit reckless, I mean, I think, you know, that's the truth. But look at it, it's amazing here today. But St James and Emmanuel isn't going it alone. All of us have felt excluded at some point in our lives and it's really important that we listen and understand other people it's joined with 11 other neighbouring churches to become the first inclusive deanery in the Church of England. Its area dean is gay and each church is sharing ways to welcome and support parishioners. What we can do in Manchester, I think, will show churches around the country, and not just Church of England ones, how you can work around inclusivity and, uh, and really make something of it. The Bishop of Manchester says the deanery is an important step, but he respects churches which don't want to make that move. As long as people are praying, they're talking with each other, they're studying their Bibles, they're coming to sincere opinions, then whether that leads them to a progressive viewpoint or a conservative viewpoint, uh, each is acceptable. What isn't acceptable is where people express a view that becomes homophobic or prejudiced in some way against any group. Embracing inclusion came too late to help Lizzie, but her parents believe it will save the lives of other teenagers. I'm sure some people will think, you know, they, the relationship they must have had with their daughter must have been, must have broken down, and it just wasn't like that at all. If this can happen to us, it could easily happen to anyone else. Your daughter, your son, your grandchild. And I know that people struggle with inclusion. It does take courage, but it's the ability to be able to do what's right, even when you are afraid. It's about accepting people for, for who they are, you know, not, not who we want them to be.